welcome to our 2020 induction ceremony and our, our chapter's first virtual induction. I am Denise Wilson, the chapter advisor for Beta Gamma Pi, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our officers, our current PTK members, our inductees, their families, and our guests. I would like to extend my congratulations to our inductees. We are here to celebrate you and your hard work and outstanding academic achievement. You are being inducted into an honor society that is 102 years old. Since its inception in 1918, Phi Theta Kappa serves to recognize and encourage the academic achievement of two-year college students. PTK provides opportunities for individual growth and development through fellowship, scholarship, leadership, and service. Our chapter embodies all of these characteristics, and we are excited to welcome each of you into our Beta Gamma Pi family. It is now my pleasure to introduce our officer advisors and our officer team. On the following slides, you will see their pictures, their names, and their positions. It is important to recognize that our officer team has for the last two years been recognized by the Arizona region as a distinguished officer team. I have no doubt that this new team is just as dynamic. Hello, everyone. My name is Trinidad Pecho. I am our chapter president. And also, I am the public information officer from Arizona Regional of Pi Theta Kappa Honor Society. You are about to induct it into the scholarly fellowship, which embraces a community college, not only for your own state, but of the nation and the world. This fellowship is Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and your chapter is Beta Gamma Pi from Java Pi College. After induction, you will find a month of the member and atmosphere of a scholarship to which you must to give of yourself in order the organization may be meaningful to you. As Nelson Mandela said, it is a better to lead from behind and to put others in front, especially when we celebrate a victory, when a nice things occur. You take the front, the line, when there is a danger. Then people will appreciate your leadership. Welcome. I am so glad you are here. Thank you. Let me introduce our guest speaker for this special day, our regional officer, Mari Cruz Chavez Tinoco. She is a vice president of Central District from Arizona Regional of Phi Theta Gappa Honor Society. Hello everyone, my name is Mari Cruz Chavez and I am the vice president for the Central District of Phi Theta Kappa's Arizona Region. I would like to thank you for inviting me to speak at Yavapai College's induction ceremony today and would like to congratulate everyone here for accepting their Phi Theta Kappa invitation. Phi Theta Kappa recognizes that everyone here is a beaming scholar filled with a plethora of potential. And now that you've accepted your invitation, you're probably wondering, well, what's next? The best advice I can give you when it comes to Phi Theta Kappa is to take on every opportunity that this organization gives you. By doing so, not only will you, you prosper as a scholar, but you will also prosper as a leader in your college and community. So I ask you to get involved, join your local chapter meetings, take initiative, and maybe look into leadership positions available in your chapter. By doing so, not only will you develop a competitive edge for your future college, scholarship, and internship applications, but you will also get the opportunity to travel across the state and maybe across the country with new friends. You paid a fee to be in this honor society, so why not get the most of it? Thank you again and welcome to Phi Theta Kappa. Let me introduce our guest speaker for this special day. She is our international officer, Maria Maiho. She is a vice president of Division 4 of Phi Theta Gappa Honor Society. 
Hi everyone, my name is Mariah Mayhew, your International Vice President of Division 4. I'm so excited to be here with you all on induction day. When I was seven years old, I was told that I probably wouldn't succeed in school. My parents were told by medical professionals that I would likely always need an IEP or 504 plan just to get through high school. College was never even mentioned. I was told all about this after I was diagnosed with two different forms of epilepsy, which is a brain disorder. A seizure is like an electrical storm in your brain that causes neurons to misfire. Many people think of it as your brain short-circuiting. While many people think of seizures as passing out or even convulsing, there are over 40 different types of seizures, and none of them look the same. In 70% of cases, the cause for epilepsy is unknown, and that was the case with me. I primarily battled obstant seizures, which are staring spells that often go undiagnosed because adults simply think children aren't paying attention. EEGs, medications, hospital stays, and more became a part of my regular routine. I never saw my sister or any of my classmates or friends face similar problems, so I felt alone. I never heard the word epilepsy outside of a hospital setting. I felt different and scared, so I hid my condition from everyone I knew. I didn't want to be viewed as the sick kid or have anyone treat me differently or take pity on me. I was embarrassed that I had to have special help from doctors just to be a normal kid. But even at an early age, I wouldn't accept you can't as a final answer. I worked hard in school, harder than anyone knew. My mom would sit with me for hours on end, going over lesson plans time and time again until I understood. I did school in the hospital. I can even remember be begging my parents to let me do homework just after recovering from seizure. As a result of my hard work, I not only graduated high school, but I graduated with, on with, with highest honors. My tenacity stayed with me throughout college and paid off when I was invited to join Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. When I joined, I didn't know I would find a second family. The recognition was just the cherry on top. It was at my community college that everything changed for me. During one of my English classes, we were assigned to write a 10-page research paper on a subject that interested us, but that we knew little about. At that point, I had lived with epilepsy for 10 years, and I knew almost nothing about my own condition. That seemed wrong, so I decided to write my research paper on childhood epilepsy. The results of my research paper blew me away. I was not alone. One in 26 people have epilepsy, and children often grow up feeling alone and different. Children often face low self-esteem and battle mental health illnesses. Worse, young adults with epilepsy are 50% more likely to commit suicide than their neurotypical peers. My heart broke as I dove deeper and deeper into research, and I became determined to do something about it. Admitting to the world that I have epilepsy is one of the scariest things I've ever done and continue to do. But if I can give hope to someone battling epilepsy or a parent who is worried for their child's future, it's worth it. I barely knew where to begin after keeping quiet for 10 years, but I had to start somewhere. In honor of the fact that one in 26 people have epilepsy, I decided to do a 26 day long event to raise awareness in my community. One of the events I wanted to host was a children's event at my local library. Growing up, I attended multiple educational events at the library, and I thought it would be an amazing chance to educate children about epilepsy. I started researching children's books about obstance epilepsy because this form of epilepsy is one of the most common in children, and I can speak personally to it. The problem was, there wasn't any. I combed through dozens of pages on multiple different websites, Sure that someone, somewhere, had published a book about obstance epilepsy, but there wasn't one. Nearly every book focused on one type of seizure, tonic-clonic, even though there's, as I said, 40 different types. To top it off, almost every main character was a white little boy. Where were the girls? And moreover, where were the girls of different ethnicities? I felt extremely frustrated as I started to examine literature and media further. It was no wonder children and even adults feel so alone. Epilepsy is still incredibly stigmatized in Western culture, to the point that it often becomes the punchline to a joke when it's portrayed on screen. 
children rarely see neurodiverse characters they can relate to in books or movies, which is incredibly damaging to their self-esteem. Since children don't have access to travel, the internet, and other ways to find out that they are, in fact, normal, characters are one of the best ways to impress this upon them. This also allows neurotypical children to learn that not everyone is exactly like them, and to not be afraid of difference. I filled my frustration into making a change. I decided I would write a children's book about obsolescent epilepsy, featuring a little girl of color. My sister provided the illustrations, and in December of 2019, Mimi, a story about ops on seizures, was published. I never expected it to extend further than that, until I got a call in early January 2020 from the former president of Paramount Pictures and former head of production at Walt Disney Studios. He called to invite me, on a full scholarship, to attend a writer's retreat in February, to be mentored by some of the top people in the media and writing industry. Needless to say, I was blown away and accepted on the spot. I felt like I was dreaming. I didn't think that my small, personal project would have meant anything to anyone except me and maybe some other people in my community. This proves that if you do something for the right reasons, the right people are going to take notice. It was through my chapter in Fight the Decapa that I had the confidence and courage to recognize a problem in our world and do something about it. You're about to join a community of change makers who are as passionate as you are about fueling change and coming up with solutions. Like me, I know some of you never thought you'd be here, whether it was in middle school, high school, or maybe even your first attempt in college. Somewhere along the line, you or someone else might have told you that you can't do it, but you didn't accept that from yourself or anyone else. You decided to keep trying. You knew that no matter how hard it was, you knew that your education was worth fighting for. Now you're about to step into another chapter and join a family of scholars who will always encourage you and cheer you on every step of the way, no matter what your goals are. While I've openly shared my journey with epilepsy with you all today, I never would have been able to do that two years ago. I was too ashamed and embarrassed by my condition to speak openly about it. I wanted so desperately to blend in and be normal that I didn't realize that there was no such thing as normal. It was only through my college, Pikes Peak Community College, and my chapter, Alpha Gamma Alpha, my year as serving as a chapter officer, that I finally found my voice to become an epilepsy advocate, to start loving who I am, and most importantly, celebrating my differences. PTK has been an unforgettable experience. It helped to transform me from a girl desperate to be normal to a woman with confidence who loves every piece of herself. As my chapter advisor says, member membership to PTK is like a gym membership. The more you use it, the more it will benefit you. I'm so excited to see each and every one of you grow as active PTK members who are going to change the world. Thank you so much for inviting me here, and I'm so excited for each and every one of you. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me or any of your other international officers because we're here to cheer you on every step of the way as well. Thank you so much. The white rose, typifying purity and beauty of life, with its white buds signifying intellectual associations. I give you this rose as a symbol of our newly formed intellectual friendship. The torch. It is symbolic of knowledge, which is the servant of wisdom, and which dwells with prudence, and leads the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. This is the emblem of Phi Theta Kappa. It consists of a golden slab, keyed at the top and bottom. The golden field, like the escutcheon of our coat of arms, refers to the golden opportunities that abound on every hand for society folk to evidence our culture and perform good works. Since gold is the most noble of metals, it shall have a further significance to our society, for it shall represent the nobility attained by those who achieve intellectual leadership. Across the slab, you will observe a black band. It represents the three ideals which bind us together and the cultural self-control 
which is the necessary foundation for true wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Shining through the black enamel background are the three Greek letters, which are the initials of the Greek words meaning wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Behind the band is a wreath, on the one side composed of oak leaves and on the other laurel. The oak leaves stand for stability and strength of character, as symbolized by the sturdy oak. The graceful curling leaves of the laurel signify achievement and success, all attributes for membership in our society. Above the band is the representation of the head of Athena, a symbol of learning. In the base appear the Greek letters meaning light, the light of knowledge and learning, the common ideal for members of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. This badge stands as a symbol for the high idealism of our organization and membership in our select group. You have studied the constitution of this organization, the purpose of which is to foster a spirit of devotion to study and to scholarly ideals among its members and whose principles are embodied in the Greek letters, which stand for phronomo, famos, and katharotes, wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Now that the standards and ideals of this organization have been fully revealed to you, you come to complete the pledge which admits you into complete fellowship. You'll be taking the oath at this point. I will read a script for you. You'll fill in your name and today's date. I, Kathy Peterson, do solemnly promise on this second day of December to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa and to keep this object and aim in mind. And I do solemnly pledge allegiance to my fellow members and promise to aid them in all worthy endeavors. As each new member's name is called, he or she will move forward to the induction table, sign the chapter's record book in the designated place for members and light his or her candle, forming the torch of knowledge.
congratulations. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society and specifically to our chapter of Beta Gamma Pi. It has a lively fellowship of scholars. I salute you for your accomplishments. I charge you to explore all ways for truth and to dedicate yourself to the cultivation of well-reasoned life. A prelude, of course, to service and honor. Again, congratulations and welcome to Beta Gamma Pi.